And hello, friends, and welcome back to Real Talks. I'm your host, David Steele, and this is part three of the conversation I had with Benjamin about why The Last of Us is one of the greatest games ever. Guys, if you like this video or any of the other videos, please hit that like and subscribe button. That's the only way that I'm going to know that you enjoy the content. And guys, please feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below. Tell me, what are you excited about the show? Are, are you excited about the stars? Are you excited to see where it goes? Okay, guys, without any further ado, let's get to the episode. I think and that's that, magic. and this is where what you were talking about with um, Ellie and Joel. So one of the big things that they did at Naughty Dog, and many games do this, is motion capture. It requires, you know, a lot of body movement we do with the actors on the mocap stage, and we try as much as possible to use our actual principal actors, use their body motion as well as their voice. We capture it all at once there on the stage. Having the what they're able to do is, let's say Benjamin and I are in a scene, okay? What they're able to do is take our movements, mimic them, put them into a computer, and then overlay that with whatever character they want. And what they do and how they do it. And the re once again, going back to the remastered version, the PS4 to the PS5 graphics are just incredible. And yeah. I mean, it's not even PS4 to it. Cause you're going from PS, like remasters. I love them. Most of the time it's just making something work on the new hardware. You don't really change the graphics that much. You might add slightly higher fidelity, but it's just getting it to run. And I love FromSoft. Their remasters are dog shit for this exact reason, because the games kind of just don't have great textures. They're definitely made to be a game you play through once, or maybe not once, a million times. They're complex RPGs, but the graphics are not the pull most of the time, right? But you go from something like The Last of Us, released at the tail end of the PS3 lifetime, the PS3 is an insane console. If you want to look up like a console generation spreadsheet, you should, because it was released over like five years, where the first edition has like eight gigabyte storage, which you think is a lot in 2007. How naive we all were. And the ending, the super slim, has 120 gigs, right? Which is much more, still not much now, but like, it feels more comparable to today. Um, like, I, I've got some old games, and it's like, required hard drive space, five megabytes, and I'm like, <laughs> five? Yeah. That's it? M me? But anyway, you have The Last of Us released at the end of the PS3 when they're using everything. It isn't just a graphically gorgeous game for the PS4. It is a genuine achievement on the PS3. Because Naughty Dog is one of the best graphically designing things for PlayStation. It's why I'm excited when they've started to move to PC, because there's actually hope they might do more with the PC. Because they get it. Good. And, like, I don't want to interrupt you too much, but, like, what, what they do with it, how they do the mocap, is gorgeous then. And the PS4 very much is an upgrade, but it is, like, mostly, hey, you can play the old game you have. On your new equipment. Yeah, Good job. No. Going to a remake yeah, is this, insane. This and it's is... Um, so, essentially, there are 10 chapters to this game. Okay? And so, we start in Boston. The goal is to get all the way across the country into Salt Lake City. And um, there are little mini missions you have to do throughout the game. And as, I mean... This is why it's so fascinating. I think, you know, I did a show the other day that I really believe, so there have been a lot of video game movies to come out over the several, a lot of years. And they've all been, for lack of a better word, horrible. Whether they're Super Mario Brothers, whether it's Assassin's Creed, whether it's Doom, I mean, pick whichever one, Uncharted. Why did you yeah. have to mention so, Doom? So Doom pick person. whatever one you want. But the point is that this is this, this is why there has been so much excitement behind this. Because this is 
they were, I won't say hampered, but they had a market that they were trying to go to and they had a demographic. And this is basically gonna be a TVMA and it, it's just, there are no barriers. Okay, and what it's going to do is going to yeah. be a four quadrant show. Okay, that's going to bring in gamers. That's going to bring in people. Something. If, if you like The Walking Dead, you're going to like this show too because it's almost the same concept. Okay, you're going to bring in people that had never pl- seen anything like this before. So this is going to be one of those things where it's just. And I know we keep going back to this, but guys, this story is second level stuff they go so deep into it it's not just like bringing an object from point a to point b there's emotion behind it there is um joy there are joyous scenes there are angry scenes as you know we were talking about earlier there are all these things and you start to seriously care about the characters and i mean that's why you know I can't understate how big this show is going to. HBO has had a run for like almost 20 years of shows that have been unbelievable. Whether you've had The Sopranos, whether you've had Succession, whether you've had Game of Thrones, whether you've had House of the Dragon. This is... Is Breaking Bad HBO? That's AMC. But this is going to be another show that is going to be revolutionary. And I did a story the other day, I was talking about it, that there is a possibility, depending on where they put leave this and everything else, there's a possibility they might actually do a second season. Now. I mean, I can't imagine. If if they do a second season. But. It's going to be very interesting where they leave this. And I think if, let's put it this way, this game was a game of the year, winner. If they do The Last of Us Part Two, we got about, they're gonna be record numbers. Record numbers. I don't even think, I, I wanna agree. I also think it's gonna be very difficult to go without a year gap. Well, and that's gonna be an important thing. And it's that, why that's I'm gonna interested. interesting that you bring that up because there is a time jump. So from this first game, yeah. Ellie is 14. When we get when we meet her in The Last of Us 2, she's 19 years old. So it is going to be very interesting to see who they would actually cast um, as the new Ellie. Um, so yeah. that's something to keep in mind, too. Um, but I still think... I never thought about that, but you're I, so I, right about so that. So the, there's something to be said there. I think whoever they get, I mean, that you could get um, I, Millie Alcock. That is the first th- person I thought of. Okay. Mm. You could, you know, she would be great. Um, but that's so far down the road. Now, as, you know, are there any other points that I'm missing here about this? What other, yeah. Um, let's, I want to talk about maybe, we mentioned video mm, game adaptations bad. Let's talk about something that I'm kind of concerned. I think The Last of Us is a layup. It is perhaps the easiest to do because you're finally adapting something from this last 10 years of narrative third-person action RPG games with a high um, importance placed on cutscenes. We haven't really had that in games really to the same degree prior to that. And a lot of games that have tried to be adaptations have failed that. Now, you could say, well, what about Assassin's Creed? That also is a recent-ish title. But Assassin's Creed went so far in trying to do the sci-fi world that they pushed away the elements that really work. And I'd also argue that Assassin's Creed works best because these are stories that take place over so many years, which you can't do in in a film. You might be able to do it in TV like with House of the Dragon. But it's a lot harder to do, and it takes more time and investment from your audience. Where does that leave Last of Us? I think Last of Us is a layup because the game is 10 chapters, which isn't completely comparable. They're going to do their own stuff, like we've already seen from the trailer. 
there's so much different. Like, that excites me. I'm like, yes, I want to see more of this world because um, it's so densely layered and populated with people and interesting people. Yeah, no, and that's why I said but, why I said about second level. I mean, it's just one of those things where it's like an onion. When you have something and then you peel it back, there's a whole other layer. And, you know, I was actually watching the trailer today in anticipation of the show. And, I, I mean, I had seen it like two or three times, but it's interesting when you go back and you watch it frame by frame by frame by frame by frame, how much stuff you miss. And there was so much stuff, Benjamin, that I was like, <gasps> now, for example, Ashley Johnson is going to be in this, and Troy Baker is going to be in the first couple yeah. of episodes. I knew that. Everybody, everybody knew that. There is a quick shot of Ashley Johnson, and she is Ellie's mother. So it's going to be fascinating to see <laughs> that she die in childbirth. How long does, you know, does she give Ellie up? Does she get bit and has to give her up? I mean, something like that. Because well, didn't she know Marlene? Because we know yeah. from the game that Marlene cares so for Marlene. Marlene is basically. another character that is going to be separate and in the game, in, in the show. So Troy... Yeah. Yeah, sorry. She's the leader of the... If for context for you guys, if you haven't played the game, Marlene is the leader of the Fireflies who gets you on the path to basically get Ellie from Boston to the Fireflies out of Boston mm -hmm. initially. And she's an interesting character because she, she makes a lot of yeah. choices. We'll put it that way. Um, and do make a lot of choices in retaliation to her that is defining of who these people are. But I'm interested to see where they go with that. I'm like, wait, what? Like, how do you... Because we know little bits and pieces of Ellie's relationship from the DLC. And, like, her and Marlene aren't, like, super tight, but Marlene's her guardian. And she looks after her despite running an entire... Insert what type of group would it be called? Like, Resist it's Resistance. It's technically a terrorist Resistance. group. Resistance. Resistance. Yeah, Resistance. there we go. That's a better term. Because they are fighting... Yeah, Resistance you have group. to understand, guys... They are fighting against Fedra. Fedra is, uh, I don't want to say federal government. They, they're mili it's a military. military. It's so they are fighting to keep control of whether they're gun running, whether rations or whatever else. They are trying to, they don't want to follow Fedra's uh, path because they're seeing where they're going with it. So they're trying to, they are a resistance group. Um, the other thing I'm going to say is interesting. There was a shot of Troy Baker in that first I mean, one of the trailers, and he was holding a gun. I went, "Oh my God, that's Troy Baker!" And he's he's so he's not in the forefront, so he's off to the side. I went, mm -hmm. "Okay, we'll see where they go with that." The other thing I'm really curious about, and I was talking about this earlier, is dialogue. Now, there's a lot of cutscenes in The Last of Us. I'm really and look, they, they've scripted. You know, they had to change some stuff because of you know time and everything else. I'm going to be very curious to see if. One thing people, and in, in, in whether it's gamers or whatever, people in general, they love authenticity. So if they're able to keep the some to the majority of the dialogue that they had in the game and adapt it to the show, I think that's going to be a huge thing. Like, you're not family, you know, what am I, you know, cargo? So it's one of those things. That's actually, I think, correct me if I'm wrong. But that's actually in that cutscene when right after Bill's, um, they leave Bill's town. And so it know, might be. It's one of those things where the more authentic they get with this, the bigger and better this is going to be. And that's going to do it for this episode. Stay tuned in the coming days for the last episode of the breakdown we did with Benjamin about The Last of Us and what makes it one of the greatest games ever. Guys, we are just one week one week away from not only the biggest series going on HBO Max, but here on the channel, and that is The Last of Us. Stay tuned. Immediately after the show, Kyle, Tyler, and myself will be doing a breakdown and giving our opinions and dissecting each and everything about it. If you like this video or any of the other videos, I please encourage you, hit that like and hit that subscribe button.
It's the only way that I know you enjoy the content, and it's the only way it's going to get out there. And guys, please leave your comments down in the comment section below. Are you excited for this series? Do you think they're going to make The Last of Us Part 2? If so, where are they going to leave it off? Okay, guys. Until next time I see you, take care, be safe, and have a great day. I'm David Steele, and you have been watching Real Talks.